everybody, Aaron with bushhoggingservices.com and Otter Creek Farm on social media. Doing a little field cleanup. And if any of you are wondering what it takes to convert land in Florida to a field, I'll talk a little bit about that as we're doing some cleaning. Uh, you can see the heavy vegetation in front in the uh, field that this little patch right here that I'm about to continue to uh, work on. And the process usually takes a couple years. I didn't think it would. First, somebody first told me that, but now I see exactly how much goes into this and what the steps are and you know how expensive it is. And to get from palmetto fields to uh, you know, grassy field is a process that usually takes what I'm seeing is two to three years and it's um, relatively continuous work during that time frame to uh, get the ground really clear of all the obstacles that are out there and mostly the palmetto roots here in Florida so uh, that's what I'm working on right now is just uh, root breaking. So the first step in the process is to, uh, this is the way I did it, uh, I've done a couple fields this way and other people may have a better way of doing it, but um, I had a bush hog or a forestry mulcher come in and just grind everything down so I could see what I'm working with and to get rid of a large amount of the vegetation that you know otherwise has to be moved, which uh, is problematic. You know, every time you move something, it costs something, and if you don't have your own equipment, then you're looking at paying somebody else to do that moving. So, uh, you know, expedite the process and keep the cost under control. Uh, so, forestry mulch it first, and then uh, I went through and dissed it and turned up what I could find as far as roots and things like that. Uh, there's a lot of pine rows in Florida, so that's always a problem where you've got to figure out how to break up those pine rows and uh, be able to have ground that's level enough for you to work on. And uh, it, it just takes time. So forestry mulched it. Uh, the next step, which uh, you could combine, you know, maybe combine, depending on how much, how fast you want to do it, how much money you want to spend, you could bring a excavator in and have somebody rip the uh, trees out by the roots. That's really the only way to get it clean. Um, get, the, get the trees out by the roots and then stack them. And then you would have somebody, probably the uh, skid steer or a tractor come through and actually just uh, uh, pick it up and move it to wherever you want to deposit it, right? Because it's, it's a lot. And forestry mulching kind of grinds that up and minimizes the piles and the size of the piles and the amount of transportation that has to be done. So, you know, it can be, I don't know if it cost, probably costs about the same to uh, do it either way. And um, so I, I did this area that you're looking at with an excavator. It took me about, it was really actually pretty quick. Uh, and you can rent an excavator for about seven hundred and fifty dollars uh, a day in our market and it's quite fun if you don't if you haven't done it before don't be afraid to try it I did a little video on that um, it just you know it takes a while and not, not actually just a couple hours really to kind of get your get your um, motor skills working in the right way to figure out the excavator controls but if you've got experience with the tractor uh, the transition is not that bad at all um, I would say by the end of an eight hour day, you know, I was pretty fluid in the basic movements. Where am I? Oh, it's missing me. Let's see. Am I facing here? It's supposed to be face tracking me. Come on.
we'll see if that works. So, uh, you know, if you're doing it, do it yourself, an excavator. You know, it's easy and fun and a new challenge. And, uh, you know, all this stuff is relaxing. So, it is uh, a good time. And it's a skill that you have. So, you know, I ended up being able to rake uh, these fields, or this small field. It's probably, in total, maybe half an acre. And like I said, in a couple hours, now I'm just getting the, uh, the roots out. Uh, there's no way that you're gonna be able to pull those roots with a tractor. They're just too big. In Florida, the palmetto roots could be six, eight feet long, and they are in the ground. And I actually started this process last year, so a lot of those roots have even uh, been weakened over time, but they don't, they're not going to uh, get so weak that you can always just grab them with a tractor. You honestly you can't even find them, so you gotta drag the excavator teeth through the soil until you hit something and then pull it out and you know go for it from there. So I've got the box plate on the back as you can see, and uh, after a couple more scoops, I'm going to start blading this uh, little field here and get it flattened out. And then once I do that, then I will uh, probably let it sit and then uh, probably comb it one more time with a landscape rake just to really kind of give it a finish, nice finish, and to get the uh, remaining light roots that aren't going to be picked up by the tractor. Doing this grapple work. the box blade just to start to smooth it out a little bit. I like to be efficient when I'm working on the tractor, which means everything that I do, I'm, I'm trying to uh, improve something. I didn't know anything about this kind of stuff five years ago. You know, I 
wanted a piece of property where I could go and play and learn and use equipment and things of that nature. And I bought a tractor at 45 acres. Sold that and bought 30 acres. Bought a different tractor. This tractor, just a bigger tractor, more horsepower. This is 75 horsepower, 74 horsepower. So one horsepower below the depth requirement, which is great. I'm happy to do with that. This is a massive Ferguson 4707. It is a uh, nice tractor. It has been relatively uh, reliable. I haven't had any significant mechanical issues. I blow hydraulic hose here. Uh, the big thing I run into is just the, the dust, dealing with the dust and the filters because of the uh, bush hogging when it's dry out is uh, you know, pretty rough dust wise you know, so there's a lot of cleaning but uh, you know at 4707 I, I do generally say buy as much horsepower as you can afford you may not know that you need it today but at some future time if you want something different <laughs> if you want to do something that you didn't see coming can't add horsepower. You can always choose to use less of the horsepower if it's available, but you cannot add horsepower. So, you know, all you have to do is make that mistake one time and then go through the process of training in a tractor, losing ten, fifteen thousand dollars on a train in, and you know, getting uh, involved in a new tractor or a different tractor, and from there it's just you know, you would have made up the difference if you just bought it. Start, you would have, would have been happier too. So, something to think about. Um, if I had to do it again, I might actually buy a 90 or 100, 100 110 horsepower tractor. Um, some of the bush hogging that I do, uh, you know, I think it's a little bit heavy for this tractor when I'm running something, you know, like a bomb of light that'll cut a four inch tree. Also, the engine has to work harder, uh, you know, at a higher percentage of its capability to do those things. Here in Florida, it's hot, and it's super hot. So if the tractor is only operating at 50% capacity instead of 90% capacity, then, you know, it would, it would just be able to do more and uh, not work quite as hard. shape it up. If you're curious about the uh, video and the audio setup, I'm using DJI equipment, uh, the Osmo 3 Adventure cam. It looks like a GoPro. Uh, what I do like about it is I had an Osmo, um, oh, I can't think of the name right now, but it's the tall skinny one, which is doing the face tracking on me. So I kept it in the DJI family. I also have a DJI drone, so, uh, you know, I, I like the drone and the quality of everything about that drone, a Maverick Pro, which I don't use very much just because it's hard to, you know, to operate, think, and fly a drone. I don't have anybody else that's, you know, assisting me in making these videos, but uh, I just got the adventure cam. This is actually the, the second video that I've done with them. It's the first in my tractor, which hopefully uh, is going to give you guys a good perspective being front, rear, and inside where I can talk to you. I am limited on time today, so I'm only going to do a, enough here to make it reasonably smooth. Those of you that don't know, on tractors, uh, like on the Massey, you have your, you've got your lift arms that uh, raise and lower your implement on the back, and then on you know, like a slightly more advanced tractor like this one, 
I actually have a knob which controls how much downward pressure there is. And if it feels something, if I set it to light, the tractor will actually pick up the implement so it doesn't bury itself into the ground. When you're doing something like plowing, you want all of the weight down so it won't pick it up. It'll just let all the weight of the implement ride on the ground. When you're bush hogging and you, you, know, you want to uh, be careful, try not to hit stumps and things like that, or you're box plating, it'll actually pick up the, the implement for you if it encounters something that could potentially cause a problem for you. Uh, I would also think like when you're root raking or uh, landscape raking, it's helpful uh, so your rake doesn't get too deep into the ground if you're just trying to sh you know, scratch the surface. Thank you. 